This episode of DNews is presented by Kingsford. Hey folks, Trace here for D News. I'm at the second annual Kingsford Invitational at the Intrepid Sea, Air, and Space Museum here in New York City. And behind me, they are cooking up chicken, they're cooking up pork, they're cooking up ribs and beef and all sorts of tasty barbecue, but they're all judged separately for good reason. Why is it that cooking times vary from one meat to another? Like you have to reach a certain internal temperature, what's that all about? Well, you know, of course, some meats are denser than others. Depending on the size of the meat is, is one big variance. There's a lot of fats and collagens that you have to break down in bigger cuts of meat. Fat really helps to make meat juicy and tender by lubricating the muscle fibers when it's melted by the heat. But fat content varies from animal to animal and from one part of the animal to another. Muscles that are used more often burn up stored fat and are therefore leaner. Typically, a, a white or lean piece of meat you want to cook hotter and faster so you don't cook it as long and you have less time for that moisture to leave. So grilling, that's why grilling is hot and fast. Barbecue is typically low and slow. That low and slow method is what helps to break collagens down. Collagen is a tough, strong protein. You find a lot of it in the legs, chest, and rump of cows and pigs because those are the weight-bearing muscles. The older the animal is, the more fat and collagen it has. In the history of barbecue, it started with the, the really kind of the, the low quality meats, it was the stuff that was left over and the guys that were out in the range would cook it. Um, they found out if they cooked it low and slow that they could actually tenderize these pieces of meat and get some useful food out of it. The, it, the musculature and so where that came from on the cow is filled with collagen and marbleization and your smoke and your cooking in order to break that down mm -hmm. so that you have this rich tender piece of meat. We don't really want it falling off the bone. What we want is a little bit of a bite to it so there's still a little bit of substance left to our barbecue. And it wouldn't be good barbecue without a marinade. Marinade or dry rub has two functions. It adds flavor, obviously, but the acids or enzymes contained in a marinade also help denature the meat proteins to help make the meat more tender. However, it only penetrates the surface of the meat. To add more flavor, especially with dense meats like beef and pork, you want to create more surface area by cutting it into smaller pieces. I want to put the rub on the exposed meat, so that's the main flavor that you're, you're putting down into the pores of the meat. So as it cooks, it's mixing with the injection, and you're getting um, the rub on the top, the injection in the middle, and they all come together to give you a great flavor. Even though we've only recently started to understand the science behind it, the act of slow cooking meat has been around for centuries, and with folks like these behind the grill, it'll probably be around for centuries more. Went a long way from taking a hunk of steer out in the trail <laughs> down to creating something that there's a, there's a whole subculture of chefs out there now creating low and slow barbecue. So now we know a little bit more about the science of what's going on inside of those pieces of meat when you're grilling them. There's a lot going on in there. Tell us your favorite type of meat to eat when you're grilling. You like brisket? You like ribs? You like chicken? I'm a brisket man myself. It's just so good. Tell us down below. Make sure you click subscribe and thanks for watching D News. I'm sad that it's gone. He's got some sauce in his face. Do I?